You are watching Tall Fusion TV. Hi, welcome to another Cold Fusion video. A couple of days ago, Elon Musk held a press conference at the SpaceX headquarters. He revealed a fascinating project in my view, a project to send citizens to the moon on a tourist flyby. It's no secret that Elon houses a fair share of controversy around him, but for a second, let's push aside the celebrity version of Elon and focus on the engineering side. In this video, we'll take a look at the possible new world of lunar tourism proposed by the CEO of the company. This lunar mission isn't just some crazy idea from a company that has no experience in the space industry. SpaceX is routinely launching satellites and has already sent multiple tons of cargo to the International Space Station via their contract with NASA. And next year, the company is going to start manned missions to the space station. Right now, 150 meters per second. Slightly below nominal. Chunk deploy. This isn't to mention the successful testing of the Falcon Heavy, the world's largest rocket at the moment. It was no easy feat landing those rocket boosters vertically. And keep in mind, what you're seeing is larger than the 15-storey building. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the proposal for this latest lunar mission. There's going to be eight carefully selected passengers traveling on SpaceX's new BFR spaceship. The way these passengers were selected may be the most interesting part, but we'll get to that in a little bit. We've talked before about the BFR in previous episodes, but essentially, it's a massive spacecraft suited for long distance travel. It's 118 meters or 387 feet long and is capable of carrying 100 people. The interior is custom configured for each trip with areas dedicated for cargo, emergency air and supplies, living quarters, and possibly zero gravity entertainment. The mission will launch from Earth, do a loop around the moon, and then possibly fly a little bit further into space to see both the moon and Earth from a distance. After this, the crew will make its way back to Earth in a vertical landing procedure. The trip is set to last five days in total. The test schedule for the BFR and this trip will be as follows. There'll be a half an hour flight next year, and then a high altitude, high velocity flight in 2020, and then the first orbital test will be in 2021. There'll be plenty of test runs without passengers, but the actual first manned orbit around the moon will be in 2023 if all goes well. The estimated cost of the BFR is around $5 to $10 billion. Now that may sound like a lot of money, but once you consider that the Apollo missions cost over $100 billion and that the BFR is reusable, it's only a fraction of the cost. So how were the passengers selected? In the press conference, Musk introduces the first passenger for the civilian lunar mission. Japanese billionaire Misaku Mizawa a former rock band drummer and the founder of the Japanese online retailer Zozo Town. Uh, the, the first paying customer of BFR. Thank you, Elon. Thank you, everyone. Oh, I cannot speak English very well, so please listen carefully, please. Yeah. Yuzaku had actually bought an entire BFR spaceship. His contribution will partially fund the research and development of the spacecraft. Since he was a child, Yusaku has always been in awe of the moon, and he wanted to follow a dream. I think these days many people will look down on him for being rich, but this situation is much more nuanced. Yusaku is actually being very generous in this case. Quote, I did not want to have such a fantastic experience by myself. That would be a little lonely. I don't like being alone, so I want to share these experiences and bring these things to as many people as possible. So that's why I choose to go to the moon with artists." End quote. So that quote might sound funny on first impressions, but it's actually quite a nice philosophical idea. The Japanese billionaire wants to invite eight artists such as musicians, film directors, writers, and painters along for the moon ride free of charge. 
He imagined that when they fly out to the moon and look back on the Earth in full view, they would be inspired to create incredible works of art. Yusaku imagines that the resulting works will benefit all of humanity. His name for the new project is called Dear Moon. And if I can say so for myself, this man is very brave to put up his hand and to say, I'm going to do this. To be the first volunteer for such an ambitious project and literally risking your life in a very real sense takes courage. In the press conference, Elon was being realistic about the risk. He stated that he was fairly certain that the mission and the development will all go to plan, but he repeatedly stressed the dangers. As much as the numbers work out, Elon can never be 100% certain that even the test BFR flights will work. And then, of course, we, do, we have reality and things do not go right in reality. Uh, usually there are many setbacks and issues, but there's so many uncertainties. It's not 100% certain that we succeed in getting this to flight. It's not even 100% certain. Like, I think it's pretty likely, but it's not certain. Yeah, but we're going to do everything humanly possible to bring it to flight as fast as, as we can um, and as safely as we can. So in viewing this, I know there's probably a lot of reductionists out there that would say that this kind of thing is stupid. Why go to space at all? Well, even for such people as this, there can be benefits in going to space. Going to space, especially in a reusable and regular fashion, is hard. There needs to be innovation to overcome and solve problems and challenges. What often results out of this process are spin-off technologies, such as new materials or novel improvements in power generation. For example, the NASA missions brought us spin-off technologies like aircraft anti-icing, the digital image sensor in your smartphone, or solar powers in their current form. As a nice little cherry on top, Boeing has thrown their hat in the ring, and they stated that the first crew to go to Mars will be aboard a Boeing spacecraft. And this was Elon's reaction. Okay, uh, that's what I want to ask you is given the increased competition, good. what do you have to say to that? Thank you so much. I mean, it, like, competition's a good thing. It's like, uh, races are interesting. I say, like, I'm glad, I hope Boeing really goes, like, hardcore for Moon and, and Mars missions. Yeah, that'd be really great. You know, I think that'd be amazing to, to have a base on the Moon. Particularly if it was, like, something where, like, the average person, if they saved up, could go. That'd be incredible. And that's, like, the kind of thing we want to do. So we've seen this before in the electric car space. Tesla changed things up in the industry after 100 years, and then suddenly, all the established car brands are talking about electric cars. They don't want to be left behind. Increased competition is ultimately a good thing. It means better products in the end. Just like Tesla and electric cars, there's now some competition in space travel. This could be the start of a very real private space race. And it's kind of amazing, just think, just 10 years ago, I would have never dreamed that I'd see such things happening so soon. Soon, we might be walking on the moon again, and it's about time. The last time we went to the moon was December of 1972. These are definitely exciting times, and we'll have to watch this story closely. So what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Anyway, so that just about wraps up the video. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been Dagogo. You've been watching Cold Fusion. If you've just stumbled across this channel, feel free to subscribe and feel free to share this video if you think that you know someone that will be interested in this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon for the next video. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.